The main purpose of this video is to demonstrate how we can integrate COMSOL Multiphysics with MATLAB. By combining COMSOL Multiphysics with MATLAB, we can obtain a very powerful modeling framework that can handle various geometries, different actuator configurations, etc. Basically, we can completely automatize the modeling process and we can just use the MATLAB scripts. Why this modeling framework is very important for control engineers? Because we can use this modeling framework to extract the system's state space model in the so-called descriptor form that has the following form. The system matrices E a, B, and C are sparse. The integration of MATLAB and COMSOL will be explained on a particular example. In one of my previous videos, whose link can be found in the description below, I have uh, introduced a simple model of an oscillating plate and I have explained how to model such a plate using the COMSOL graphic user interface. In this video, we will add additional complexity to this example. So, we will add several support points and we will assume that every point is a mass spring damper system. So, here is how our geometry looks like. We are considering a, a plate, a circular plate. And we are assuming that its outer edge is constrained. It's completely fixed. Then we assume that there is an array of point loads. For simplicity, we are going to consider 3 by 3 array. So the array is an array of point loads. So at every point, we assume that there is a force F acting on the system. In addition, we assume that every point, so this is the side view, is supported by a damper and a spring. So this is the ground, this is the plate, the edges are fixed. So at every point we have a damper spring support. In addition, we add an additional point mass to the system. Now, we can model such a system using the COMSOL graphic user interface. However, it will take us at least 20 minutes to model all the components. So here you can see uh, how to model such a system. We have nine point loads, we have nine spring foundation, we have nine point masses. Now imagine that you have a thousand actuators and that you have a thousand spring damper mass foundations. Would you be able to model such a system using the uh, COMSOL graphic user interface? It's very difficult. That's why we need to use MATLAB so we can completely automatize the modeling process and we can obtain the model in, in a few seconds. Having thousands of uh, these support points or thousands of actuators or thousands of different elements or also we can uh, have a complex geometries etc so I'm using this uh, approach uh, in order to model a, a large-scale deformable deformable mirror used in adaptive optics systems and I find I found this approach very useful 
So in order to integrate MATLAB with console multiphysics, we have to have an additional console package. This package is called LiveLink for MATLAB. So here is the main page of the LiveLink for MATLAB. So we are interfacing console and MATLAB using the LiveLink package. I started to look into the problem of uh, integrating uh, MATLAB and console multiphysics maybe two years ago when I was uh, initiating my research on identification and modeling of large-scale deformable mirrors. And uh, at the beginning, I had several difficulties. I was not able to understand uh, how to model a system directly from MATLAB, since the documentation, in my opinion, is not uh, uh, clear and transparent. So, since I'm a mechanical engineer, and mechanical engineers, when they don't know something, they start with a reverse engineering approach. So, I started to follow a reverse engineering approach. And I'm going to explain you how to start if you don't know anything about LiveLink. So, what did I do? Uh, I started with a simple model, with a simple two-dimensional a thin plate model and all the steps uh, that I'm going to do right now they're explained in my previous videos whose link can be found in the description below so I'm modeling a thin plate with a single with a single support point so I'm going to click on 2d then I'm going to choose structural mechanic plate Then I'm going to click on study and I'm going to click on time dependent study. And I'm going to click on done. Now, here is the main window. I'm going to define the geometry, simple circle. Then I'm going to define a single point let's say the coordinates of the point will be 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 then I need to define the material um, in uh, in the sequel I will use the I will use the zero dur material however here for um, simplicity simplicity I will just use uh, structural steel so I'm going to click on add material and I'm going to click on re recent materials take some time to, lo to load and I'm going to click on the structural steel okay now the next step is of course to define the boundary condition we are going to choose the fixed constraint um, and then we are going to select the boundary conditions the edges of the system are fixed it's kind of a little bit difficult to select the edges, but hopefully we will be able to do so. Okay, now the next step is to define the boundary, actually the point load. So we need to define the point load and we want to assign such a point load to the defined point. Okay and we are going to choose a vertical for force of 3 newtons. The next step is to add the spring foundation, spring damper foundation. So we are going to choose the spring constant of 1000 and the damping constant of 100. And of course do not forget to specify the point. So now the point 4 the point four, we have a vertical force and we have a, a spring damper foundation. Additionally, we are going to add a point mass at that point, specified point mass of 0 0.3 kilograms. And we are going to again to choose this point. Now, everything is ready and we can perform the study. We can perform the study, we can click on compute 
in order to generate some results. Okay, here are main results. So we have height expression here, but we are going to add another graph here. And we're going to add a surface here. And here we're going to choose the vertical displacement, Z component of displacement. And we're going to click on height expressions to get a nice graph. One additional graph will generate is 1D plot group. And uh, we're going to select a point graph since we want to plot the deformation of a certain point. And we can obtain a deformation. You can see the deformation is damped. We need to modify the, in the study setting, we need to modify the resolution so we can choose to obtain the result every 0 0.01 second. And we can perform, if we can click on build all, mesh is already generated and we can click on compute. So here are our results better. Okay, now we can simply save this model using native console file format. And here comes the main step. So this code, the whole procedure can be run from MATLAB. So what did I do? I realized that we can save this code as a MATLAB file. So let's save it as a MATLAB file. Here it is. If we double click on it, we will obtain the source code that completely models the system. So here is the complete source code. So what is interesting here, so this is how Comsol internally adds points to the system. Then you can learn a lot of things from this code by just looking at the uh, looking at the code lines. So here is where we add forces. Here is how damper and spring foundations are being add etc so you can completely run you can completely automatize the modeling process using matlab i have modified the previous code that models only a single point with a point load and the a spring foundation to include nine points and i'm going to explain you the modified code. So here I define, I manually define the actuation point. So it's a grid of uh, three by three with the distance between the point of 0 0.3. Then I coded the point. So I wrote a for loop that loops over the coordinates and adds at every point it adds uh, a so-called console point. So you can see how the core code uh, code looks like. So the console has its own internal notation for points. It uses strings. It's a bit uh, it's a bit confusing, but after some time, uh, you will hopefully get it. And uh, another step is to uh, add the point load. So now with this piece of code, I'm saying assign the point loads to the previously defined points. Again, the console has its own notation for point loads. It uses strings. You will need to convert uh, integers to strings. And what is important here, so I had to, it took me quite some time to figure out this part. Well, uh, you need to select points uh, by using uh, its, uh, uh, its, uh, 
neighbor, neighboring, neighboring area. Actually, you're assigned to, assigning the point loads to points by basically marking the points with uh, certain certain area. This is very important to to add this part because otherwise the whole procedure will not work. And here we specify we specify the amount of the amount of the force. So every point has zero has three newton force acting on it. We repeat the same procedure for uh, stiffness and damping foundations. Again, we have to assign to every previously defined point, console point, spring damper, foundation, and we add mass, additional mass. And uh, everything here is, uh, is uh, what console uh, original code provided us and we can run we can run this code we can easily run this code so it's still running it takes some time so with this procedure you can uh, model complex systems with a uh, number of actuators with a large number of sensors. Um, in the next video we are going to talk about how to extract the system matrices. So let's see the results. So this is our third graph. Here it is. So this is the total displacement at the point 0 0.3, 0 0.3. You see how it looks. You can also obtain the height expressions directly from MATLAB. So here are the height expressions, etc. Now, uh, it is always good to compare the results with uh, results that uh, COMSOL provides, right? Directly with the results generated, generated using the uh, COMSOL graphic user interface. So we can, we can uh, simply run, run the code in the COMSOL multiphysics interface. So these two codes, the codes uh, generated using MATLAB is completely different code from the code um, entered using uh, console graphic user interface, but they should produ produce the same results. So... Let us look at the point graph. So this is the point graph generated using the console graphic user interface. And this is the point graph generated directly from MATLAB. The results are almost identical. There is some difference, very small difference in displacements. As a conclusion, in this video, I demonstrated how to use LiveLink to uh, model complex systems directly from MATLAB. In my next video, I will explain how to extract the state space models using LiveLink. This is very important for control engineers. Thank you very much for your attention.